Where is my mouse? All right, so uh, just real quickly, the team is uh, USC ISI, uh, SRI International, University of Utah, and University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. And um, we are in a collaborative uh, grant through the NSF to do this work. Um, so what we did is we looked around and we saw that our community has some specific needs and challenges in meeting those needs. And, and we really need to be able to share uh, repeatable, reproducible, and reusable artifacts in cybersecurity experimentation. And I was really happy um, in one of the sessions um, earlier to hear one of the questions asked of you know, what artifacts are coming out of your research that you can share with other people so that they could perhaps reproduce and peer validate your work. And uh, it was kind of interesting in that, you know, some of the, the folks said, yes, you know, we're open sourcing this and this data is available. And other folks said, well, you know, the data that we used is, you know, it belongs to certain organizations and we can't just share that. And so we all know that there are some issues around that. But if we had the ability to share all this stuff, it could greatly enhance our ability to build on each other's work and to help in comparing solutions to, to problems or approaches to, to solving problems. One of the issues we have is that sharing artifacts is, can be difficult and time consuming. And think about all the issues with packaging uh, and uploading all, all that stuff and then the ongoing support for it. And so that can be kind of a discouraging thing and, and you know, some people may not wanna share because of that. Um, and also uh, thinking about it from a consumer standpoint, um, you know, if you, you're getting ready to start some research and you're looking for relevant artifacts to your experiments, um, how difficult is it to go out and actually find the artifacts that might be out there that could accelerate your research? Um, part of the problem is that the artifacts can be all over the place. Some of them are in GitHub, some of them are in Zenodo, some of them are on uh, other websites or private websites. Uh, and so it, it can be difficult to find very quickly the relevant stuff that, um, that you then want to examine further in order to determine whether you want to use it or not. So what we really need is the community to engage in broad sharing of artifacts and then we need technology that's going to help facilitate this, this rapid sharing and discovery of these artifacts. So um, what we have proposed to do to NSF uh, and they liked it well enough to give us a grant, is to build a platform for the community that's going to lower this barrier. And so it's going to, we're going to provide tools that, that assist in packaging and importing. Um, we're um, developing rich semantics around the artifacts and um, going to create some intelligent search to help you guys with that. And then we want to enable the community to have a place where they can exchange um, their experience with the different artifacts. So, you know, for example, this artifact worked really well for this problem, but not maybe for this problem. Um, so we have this notion of there being a hub in the center, which, you know, the content of that, we would want to be, you know, community crowdsourced. You know, you guys put your artifacts in and your, your tools and whatnot. Um, and it would then be able to, to, uh, link people to the tools and artifacts that may be stored in any of these places on the back end, GitHub, Zenodo, websites, whatever. Um, <clears throat> so we think that this kind of breaks down into two separate sets of related user workflows. There's sharing artifacts and the experience around those artifacts, and then there's consuming artifacts and the experience around those artifacts. Today, we want to focus on the consuming side. Um, we're, we're trying to get uh, the skeleton of a system up and running um, with um, some workflows. And, um, uh, and then at the same time, we're, we're pre-populating the hub with some artifacts that are out there because you know if you go to the hub and there's nothing in it, then it's kind of useless. So we wanna get some pre-population going, but we also need to get um, some, you know, the nuts and bolts done so people can start playing with this and decide, oh, well, it really needs to have this feature or, or the search should really work this way in order to make things a lot easier to use. Uh, my mouse has disappeared again. Ah, 
Yeah. So as I said, we're going to, we're going to focus on the consumer side today. Uh, some of the workflows that, that we were just kind of brainstorming on our end were, you know, um, finding artifacts that are potentially relevant. So that implies a search mechanism, um, being able to, to do some initial vetting of the artifact to decide, should I pursue this artifact? And so in order to do that, you might want to understand something about what the artifact is at the highest level. Um, you, you might want to determine, you know, what's the quality of the artifact. Maybe there's a rating mechanism uh, so the community can rate the artifact. Uh, understand how others have viewed, uh, used the artifacts and, and what was their experience with it. So, so we're thinking, you know, at least a comment section, but maybe, maybe actually discussion threads. So we need to figure that out. You know, what, what do you guys want there? Um, understanding the details of the artifacts. So, uh, you know, in being able to, to um, grab it and download it. So it's, if it's, uh, you know, some data, being able to download that data, being able to hyperlink to wherever it lives on the internet. Um, we might want to be able to bookmark uh, the artifacts. So either, you know, having favorites, that would be the simplest thing, uh, all the way to creating collections to possibly having, you know, a, a research notebook mechanism built in. Um, and then of course we want to be able to save uh, artifacts locally. Uh, we've also have a notion of being able to maybe export directly in, into a test bed. We're not really looking at that right now. We think that's kind of far out, but that is something that we have talked about here. Um, so at this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Tim, and he has a short uh, demonstration where he has mocked up a straw man workflow just so you guys can get an idea of, of um, kind of how this might work in trying to, to find an artifact of, of interest. So Tim, I'm going to give it to you. Tim, right. I, okay, I can hear you now. Great. <clears throat> so I'm just going to quickly walk through uh, a demo of uh, the front end that we put together for the system. Uh, so uh, this is just running locally at this point, uh, but it is querying uh, our back end system that's been uh, working on curating some of the, the content that Laura mentioned. Um, so uh, when you hit the page right now, we're just landing on a splash page. Eventually we'll have like user accounts uh, where people will log in and have their profile and their dashboard associated with what it is. But I'm going to just click through this for now. Um, so the page that that's come up is uh, sort of the beginning of our of our search capability. Um, right now we're searching by keyword. It's returning uh, results to the screen. Um, that uh, are based on on the keyword that that's entered. Um, <clears throat> so here I just typed in phishing, and and I can look at artifacts that are associated with phishing. Um, the artifact that I'd like to show you is this is one um, uh, associated with uh, cybersecurity, and and in particular a data set uh, that uh, they use for uh, sharing traces. Um, so as you can see, we have uh, a rating system. Um, this is just randomly generated right now. So don't, uh, don't think negatively of this particular piece of research in that it's two stars. Um, if I refresh it, it would, uh, it would be different. Um, the relevance score is something we're calculating. Uh, that's a work in progress as to how exactly we're calculating that, but that's part of what we'll uh, refer to as, as the knowledge graph. Um, this is just a shortened description. Um, of the artifact that's there, uh, um, pulling it from, uh, from the remote source. So if I want to see the full details of the whole artifact, I can click uh, read more and it'll show me the rest of the details of the artifact, um, the rest of the description, what type of artifact it is, uh, who the creators of it are, what keywords are tied to it. Um, and then I can download all of the files associated with that particular artifact. Um, so this is, again, just the beginning of, of the system. But if I go back, um, I can also go and, and look at comments on the system. Um, so in this particular case, I'm, I just have some Laura Mip, some uh, uh, text in here. Uh, but I can uh, see comments that people have left about this, about this particular uh, artifact. I can rate the artifact. I can um, put in text. 
uh, and uh, and submit that comment. Uh, and now I I've added that that new comment to to the system, uh, providing whatever you know context or, or other information I want. If I want to go back and look at the the detailed view of of the component. Uh, or of the artifact, rather, I can look at, at um, those details, and I can also go to its original source. So up here, it's not perhaps clearly evident, um, but this is referencing a DOI number. And so if I click on, on the DOI, uh, it will go to doi.org and redirect it to the original source location for this, which this particular artifact came from Zenodo, um, and I can access it at its, at its permanent location and see any other references from there. Um, so again, at the beginning of this system, um, we don't have, uh, you know, the full knowledge graph that, that we're working on associated with this implemented, uh, but, but you would be able to see things like, okay, well, what are related works of this? And um, I could click on any of these keywords and pull up additional data artifacts associated with those keywords or follow, um, you know, sort of the hierarchy of, of relations between the different artifacts that we have there. Um, so I'm going to uh, stop at this point and turn it back over to uh, to Laura. Okay, I'm just kind of fumbling here trying to figure out how to share my screen again. Um, there we go. All right. Hopefully you guys are seeing this. So, um, so that really ends our presentation. And now um, we we really want to talk to you guys. Um, you know, we want to understand. You know. How would you want to interact with this thing? Um, what, what would you need to facilitate your research? How do you currently look for artifacts? And, and what would the ideal hub do that would make this process a whole lot easier? Oh, you, um, I'm hearing you can't see my screen. Can, um, That's correct. We're not seeing it. There you are. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. OK. Um, so yeah. Um, so we really just want to understand what it is that, that you guys think you might want. Um, you know, are we, you know, what are we missing? What are we not thought about? Um, you know, are there some additional workflows, perhaps additional information? You know, I mentioned earlier, maybe, you know, having an actual research, um, uh, uh, notebook. Uh, would, would that be something that you would want or would that, you know, be a waste of our time? We have limited funds, right? So we want to implement the features that would be the most valuable to the community. Um, so with that, um, I think, so I'm not real happy with um, this webinar uh, capability. Um, I'm trying to figure it out, actually. Um, so. I think that what I really like is for people to just be able to unmute themselves, but that unfortunately won't work here. So what we need is for people to, uh, I guess, raise their hand when they would like to talk. Um, and I am missing it. So, all right. There you go, Sven. Thank you. Um, hi, Laura. Um, hey. Thank you for the presentation. Um, I, I was wondering, and this is just some of my background that I've done, um, I guess maybe an annotation of the artifact, artifacts perhaps, if there's a limitation on use or the type of use, or you know, when you have that whole data sharing aspect, uh, is it fully accessible or you should be used in this way but not in the others, you know, that, that kind of annotation, if that makes any sense for your uh, hub. I know it, it makes absolute sense. And I was kind of getting that, at that, you know, with the, you know, the people sharing their experience saying, well, you know, I tried it for this kind of problem, but it didn't really work for this kind of problem. And so I guess the question is, does, you know, at some point do we need to somehow extract that kind of knowledge that we've gleaned you know, through the the community discussion, and then uh, elevate that to details on the actual artifact. I, I don't know. Any thoughts about that? Well, I think if if we can start annotating and collecting the annotations, we can see what kind of categories it comes in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's all I really have. All right. And, and Sven, are you talking more in terms of use restrictions that come along 
with the artifact, almost like access controls rather than um, uh, prior users' experiences? Uh, yes, I, that's exactly what I was referring to. Uh, not that you can have, really have restrictions because it's, it's there in the hub. Uh, maybe guidelines, right? You can, one, once you, you, you take the data, I mean, it's, it's yours, but you know, when you have something like, like impact or uh, you know, similar data sets, you know, they tell you you should use it in this way and not another. So yeah. in, in, in that sense, you know, recommendations, you know, we, we trust you to do the right thing, but this is really what the creator of the data set would like you to restrict it to, perhaps. Ah, oh, okay. Got it, thanks. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that, that's a little different than what I was thinking. Um, let's see, so we have a question, well, it's actually a comment, I guess, in the Q&A section. Um, someone asked anonymously, it says the issue feature like in GitHub is more useful than a linear flow of comments. And I personally tend to agree with that. Um, uh, but, you know, I guess we really wanted to hear from the community because what we don't want is for Laura to come up with requirements in a sandbox. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. So I'm also seeing in the Laura, uh, Laura, I'm going to help you. So uh, if people want to ask questions live, uh, just raise your hand and I'll, I'll make, I'll unmute you. Okay. Oh, that would be great. Thank you for doing that. Um, so I'm seeing a comment in the chat. It says it's a great step toward re reproducible studies. One particular thing to consider is store a snapshot of the submitted artifact. I understand that artifacts will be backlinked using GitHub or similar, but a source repo will get update new branches. Some things might get removed. And that is an excellent point. And we've actually been having an internal discussion about that because if we don't store them locally, then we're going to have to have some mechanism that that either runs on a periodic basis and goes out and checks to see if things have changed or if things have disappeared, or <clears throat> when people do a live search, it's gonna have to do some checking before it presents it to the user because what we don't want is to present something that has a bunch of broken links and incorrect information because that quickly becomes non-useful. Um, Let's see, uh, from <clears throat> Max in the chat, it says, not sure if someone mentioned, but uh, Yara search built in would be fantastic. Um, okay, so I hate to admit this, but I'm not familiar with Yara search. Um, I bet Tim is. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a pattern matching framework for uh, doing things. So basically just a syntax. Um, so we'll, we'll take a look at it and see. Okay. Yeah. So um, as far as the search goes, uh, you know, I know right now we just have a simple keyword search. We have been talking about the need to have a, an advanced search that allows you to search on things like, you know, the type of artifact, maybe, maybe even the authors, maybe you, you heard an author might have something that's relevant to you. So all the different pieces of metadata, you need to be able to search on those. Okay. Uh, other thoughts? Laura, you, oh, I'm sorry. This is Terry Benzel. Didn't mean to jump in. Yeah, it's okay. Um, you have an interesting um, comment in the Q&A. Uh, you okay. know, this is, this is lots of multitasking. We're, we're doing um, chats and Q&As and hand raises and everything. Um, yeah. Th uh, thanks for drawing my attention that I actually have all the windows open and I'm trying to like follow them. So let's see. So it says perhaps the annotations and artifacts can be paired with runnables so that they can be tested in a sandbox using Docker containers or on Kubernetes. So yeah, we've the idea of being able to bring them in and test them in a Docker has come up. We haven't really given that a whole lot of thought, but it was an idea that's been thrown around. Um, I think the, uh, the, the context where we were talking about that, I believe, and you know, team correct me if I'm wrong here, was that you know, we might wanna do that before taking it into a test bed. Um, so that would give us like a first look at it. Right, uh, again, this is Terry. I think one of our ideas was, could you take, if you had a like full experiment description from some test bed somewhere, could you run it in some, some sort of a VM or a container and test it out and then maybe download it and take it into your own test bed or some, some other test bed somewhere? 
or if you want to use different pieces of experiments or experiment descriptions or data, you can do a quick run in a, in a VM kind of context before you export it and try and start adapting it. Mm -hmm. um, to, to add a little bit on that, this is Tim Yardley. Um, one thing that we've talked about a lot is uh, to support reproducibility. Um, how does one package up artifacts and, and make them usable and, and, and convertible between different systems? Uh, so we've been looking at a, at a lot of different packaging formats and stuff that are being used for other scientific research uh, that, uh, that can aid in that. So we'd love any, any input from, from the audience on uh, formats that they've used or that they're familiar with um, that they think we should take a look at. Okay. Um, so we have a, a very interesting comment in the chat. Um, someone says that it would be good to have a more descriptive rating system. So all right, right now we just kind of showed, you know, the five stars like you get on Amazon. So for example, users should be able to rate artifacts from a different standpoint, for example, relevance, reproducibility, and so on. In some sense, it would be similar to paper reviewing. So that's actually a really interesting idea. Dave, Dave is, is frantically taking notes, so uh, let's yes, see. Yes, I am. <laughs> uh, let's see, then we have a, a question from Jason Lee. Uh, so all artifacts would have to obtain public release before starting here, is that correct? Um, yes, um, we, so Right now, we're starting with artifacts that are already out there. So ones that people have already published through GitHub or Zenodo or whatever. And um, we assume that they have gotten the public release that they need. But if they are coming in with a new artifact and they'd like to bring it in through our process and get it stored, uh, and there's still some debate internally about exactly how that will work and where those artifacts will go, um, they they would need to get the public release we're not going to do that for anybody i don't believe we're really looking more i think at the technical issues associated with it um let's see hang on uh, another q a from jason how would i know if an artifact is a good one uh, good question so that's why we want to have the community discussion and the ratings um we're hoping that um, in doing that, um, you know, it will help you um, make your own decision about whether or not it's a good artifact or not. Um, because if you just see the description of it, that's not going to tell you anything, right? Um, so, you know, and if you pull that artifact out and start trying to work with it and you find that there's a significant flaw in it, that then we would want you to, as, you know, part of your feedback to the community, to let folks know about the issue with it. And hopefully, you know, if it was, it's code, then the, the authors maybe can, you know, find that and, and fix it. So, so that would be good. Um, all right. Uh, back up to the chat. Um, how about guarantees of integrity of artifacts? Hillary. Um, so can, um, Gabriella, can you promote Hillary to a uh, panelist so she can talk or unmute her? Is that, I, I'd like to tease this out a bit and understand yes. more yes. about what you're asking about. Getting there. Okay, I'm allowing to, to talk. There are two Hillary's here. I'm not sure which Hil one. Hillary Orman, yes. Okay. So, so Hillary, um, so can you explain more about what you're asking? Well, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, uh, suppose one of the artifacts is a very large data set. Mm -hmm. And people say, well, this was from an experiment. Um, but somehow it's been corrupted and it actually isn't the data set that they thought they uploaded. Um, it's, it's been corrupted, um, something went wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, the, that's the most primary uh, kind of integrity that I'm talking about. Okay. So are you suggesting that it would be helpful to have, I, I don't know, like a check sum or something uh, so that we can determine if the, if it's been corrupted? I mean, because by the time it gets to us, it may already be corrupted and I don't know how we would know that. 
Well, the submitter could uh, could check. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there, there are ways of doing it. Um, and yeah, I mean, that would be the least of, uh, of what one would like to see. Uh, so this is, this is Terry again, Eric Eide is on. Eric's building um, an importer tool. I mean, we are looking at ways to help automate, um, you know, the import or upload of, of information um, into the hub. I, I don't know, given the diversity of what an artifact could be, uh, that there's any kind of a, you know, a simple integrity check that could be applied. I don't know, if, Eric, do you have any comments there? Uh, I had not thought about this uh, issue at all, but, um, but uh, uh, we'll, we'll think about this. I, I do think that maybe some sort of attestation by the uh, person who imports an, an artifact uh, might be a, a useful thing to keep track of. Okay. All right. Um, we'll see. So uh, Jim has a question in the Q&A. He says, uh, how will we vet that they have the public release permission? Uh, great question. Um, and we haven't even talked about that. In fact, we, we haven't really even talked about public release at all. We were just, I think we were just kind of assuming people would have it. So um, yeah, not our problem, really. It, it's a it's a public place, and you choose to post something there. That's your responsibility, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think you know it, it gets into an issue if we store the artifact locally on our system, and so we're, we're going to have to think about that. Dave, Dave will take a note, and we're going to have to go back and put our hats on and figure that out. It may just be that that we just make them, you know, sign a form, you know, online saying you know, uh, we have public release. Um, okay, trying to not miss people because there's a lot going on here. I'm, I'm happy for all this discussion. Thank you so much. Um, and somebody has their hand raised, I thought. Oh. While you're getting that, can I jump in on, somebody has yeah. asked about citing and um, citations. And so I think DOIs, I, I think we've already got some some look at looking at DOIs, right, Tim? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we're looking at a variety of different ways to store uh, the artifacts using permanent locations and then getting DOIs assigned by leveraging those permanent locations. And there was another simple one, um, you know, user accounts, bookmarking, artifacts for later, that's all on the, on the drawing board, uh, but certainly yeah. I yeah, know. absolutely. Yeah, we don't have that yet. But um, so one of the things that we were um, wanting to know, though, is, you know, as far as bookmarking goes, do you want just a simple bookmarking? Or do you want to be able to create collections? Or do you want something even richer than that? So just trying to figure out how far we should go. And, uh, you know, so is it just can you bookmark it? Or do you can you annotate it? Um, what would be helpful to you guys? Um, Okay, um, if I can jump in here. Go ahead. Uh, so, Sandy Teich, City University of New York. Um, so, one way to annotate, which I think is really useful, and I see like metadata references and so on, um, how has this artifact been used in a prior publication? I think that is an interesting vetting process, right? Because you can go there and say, okay, how is this artifact being used before? And you can judge yourself in your own rating system whether that's useful or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So basically an annotation with prior uh, publications in various venues. So, so uh, do we even to that paper? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's see. So uh, a question, um, do you plan on having a publisher author reputation next to artifact rating? Um, well, that would be really nice. Um, I guess part of the thing that we're grappling with is, you know, once we open it up to, to you, know, help, you know, the community being able to comment and rate and everything, what we don't want to do is shame people. And so, and, and there's some people who are just critical for no apparent reason. And so, you know, are we going to let the community, you know, <sighs> take care of themselves or do we need to have moderators? You know, it, it get, we get into all that 
those issues. And so we're just trying to figure out how far we should go to provide you guys the information you need without, we don't want to discourage people from participating because they participated and then they got a bad reputation. Do you understand what I'm saying? Um, let's see. Uh, go back down. Uh, let's see. Jason Lee has another question. Do you have a good or rigorous way of admitting artifacts? Artifacts could be code, data, documentation, methodology, et cetera, et cetera. What about cool works on IoT hardware? Um, so let's see. Yelena. What's up? Yelena, I'm trying to find you. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about um, uh, the way you guys are looking at uh, artifacts? Um, sorry, Laura, can you repeat the question? I lost your sound for a moment. Okay, yeah, so Jason was asking, um, you know, basically how are we going to uh, curate and admit artifacts, you know, right? So we, we really want to put high quality artifacts in here. What, what is our process going to be for vetting these artifacts and determining what's of high quality? Right, so there, you know, you can look at it two ways. One way would be to say, well, anything that is relevant to the user search is, is high quality. And when you do a search on Zenodo, for example, you get a lot of matches and only some are re related to the search that you've done. So that's the type of curation we are doing right now. We are going, uh, we have algorithms that go through the, um, the abstract of the artifact on Zenodo and mine keywords and rank them based on, based on different algorithms and we figure out um, you know, if you type trace analysis, if you're getting the results that are really related to trace analysis. Uh, the other way to look at that question is, um, is the, you know, artifact uh, high quality in a sense of, you know, does it have good data? Is it going to be useful to, to me? We really cannot uh, measure that, I think. Um, I think that's up to community to, you know, try things out and, and figure out what's useful and then rate artifacts in, in that way so that we can uh, extract that information based on the rating and, and promote things on the hub. Okay, uh, so we, we're running out of time. We've got like one minute left and, and we need to help I quickly get back on, on schedule. Um, so I, we really appreciate all your uh, inputs. Uh, one, one last question was when do we expect the system to be live or at least in beta? We're hoping to have something uh, live this summer that people can start kind of pounding on and working on. We need your involvement continuously, not just today. So if you have ideas for workflows or use cases, think, you know, features, requirements, uh, talk to us, get that information to us. We, we really want to know about it. We're going to plan some future engagements. We'll probably have something like this BOF on a fairly continuing basis, at least once a quarter, maybe more frequently. Um, follow us on our Twitter account. We're search under bar hub with two C's. Uh, we also have a website now you can go to, and uh, if you will either put your email address in the chat or send your email address to one of us, we will add you to a mailing list and let you know when we're gonna be having these, these future events. And with that, um, I think Gabriella, we have to end it now. Uh, yes, please, and uh, join the next session. I mean, you still have five minutes. Uh, so if you still have a, a last minute question, just go for it. Uh, do we have a last minute question? Um, I, yeah, well, I guess there was the one about what about cool works on IoT hardware. We didn't really answer that. And um, so obviously we can't stuff hardware into this thing, but um, if, if um, you know, this is, this is cybersecurity. So, you know, if you've got tools for working with that, if there's some special piece of hardware and there's information on the net about how to acquire that and how to use it, we certainly can include that. Uh, not, not a, uh, that we would not rule that out. Laura, has yes. uh, Anchor's, uh, so th there's a new Q&A question from Anchor. Okay. Oh, I didn't, uh, I didn't see that. Thank you. I'll just scroll down. Uh, with so much research going on and new artifacts coming out periodically following previous works, would there be a mapping or linking to previous most relevant artifacts corresponding to a certain data set? That is an awesome um, suggestion. 
Um, and I, I like the idea of being able to walk back on the providence so we know kind of how things were derived from each other. That, that is a great suggestion. Uh, we did not, by the way, um, we have not thought about that, I don't think, but yes. Uh, it sounds like Tim wanted to say something about that. Uh, no, I was just marking it answered. Oh, okay. All right, great. And, and uh, Robert Story had a question about, can we uh, like sign up to follow an artifact um, to get notifications? That seems like that would be doable, right, Tim? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so uh, I didn't show it during the demo, but we have a basic ability to, to like an artifact. Um, and that's sort of the beginning of a collection. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll likely be implementing a feature like a watch list um, and then it might be able to email or, or give you notifications in the, in the uh, site or, or some variety of, of ways, you know, any indication of how you'd prefer to watch those things would be great too, keeping it, you know, contained in the system or if you want it to be able to email you or, or how that would, uh, uh, you know, how that engagement would look like. Um, let's see, there was one other question. Do we have something like user account bookmarking useful? Oh, wait, I think we already, I think we already answered that one. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for, for joining us and participating. Um, again, you know, please uh, stay involved. Uh, we want to hear from you and um, have a great afternoon uh, listening to the rest of the really good talks here at IEEE S&P. This has been a, a wonderful conference and, and I really want to thank the organizing committee for, as I had said before, pulling a rabbit out of their collective hats on this one. So have a great afternoon. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Laura. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Laura. Good job. Bye. Hey. Okay.